For more than 30 years, Emirates Airlines was considered untouchable, a global symbol of luxury, precision, and above all, safety. The airline had operated millions of flights without a single major accident, but on August 3rd, 2016, that legacy was shattered. Flight EK521, a Boeing 777-300ER, was on final approach to Dubai International Airport after a routine flight from India. But what happened next wasn't turbulence or a technical glitch. It was a terrifying breakdown of automation, awareness, and timing. The aircraft touched the runway, then lifted off again, and seconds later exploded into a fireball. What caused a modern marvel of aviation to collapse in a matter of seconds? What did the pilots miss until it was far too late? And who was the hero that gave his life to save others in the aftermath? This is Inside Aero Disasters, and this is the story of Emirates Flight 521. The day began like any other. At 4.30 a.m. UTC, Emirates Flight EK-521 was being prepped on the tarmac at Trivandrum International Airport in southern India. The flight was scheduled to carry 282 passengers and 18 crew members across 1,865 miles of airspace to Dubai, a journey of just under four hours. The aircraft in service was a 13-year-old Boeing 777-300ER, powered by two Rolls-Royce Trent 892 engines. With over 58,000 flight hours logged, it had served Emirates well. It was, by all accounts, in perfect working condition. The flight deck was manned by two experienced pilots. Captain, 34 years old, a UAE national with 7,457 total hours, including over 5,000 on the 777. First officer, Jeremy Webb, a 37-year-old Australian with 7,957 total hours and 1,292 on type. Though this was their first time flying together, both men were highly trained and focused. The captain would handle the flight controls while Webb monitored systems and communications. By 5.06 a.m., the aircraft was cleared for takeoff. The twin engines roared to life as the 777 soared into the sky. Over the Arabian Sea, everything felt smooth. Passengers were served breakfast, many watched in-flight entertainment, and in the cockpit, the crew casually discussed schedules and weather. Nothing unusual. But as 8 a.m. approached, the plane began descending into the hot, dusty airspace over Dubai and into trouble. At first, nothing seemed wrong, but the closer EK-521 got to the runway, the more hostile the environment became. The cockpit received weather updates from Dubai's Automated Terminal Information Service, ATIS. Temperatures above 120 degrees Fahrenheit, 49 degrees Celsius, erratic wind gusts, and most crucially, a low-level wind shear warning. Wind shear is the silent killer of landings, a rapid invisible shift in wind speed or direction that can send an aircraft dangerously off course. It's especially common in Dubai where hot desert air collides with cooler sea breezes. The captain, familiar with Dubai's summer hazards, briefed the first officer thoroughly on how to respond if wind shear occurred. They reviewed checklists, confirmed procedures, and remained calm. However, there was a key piece of information they never received. Two aircraft ahead of them had attempted landings, but aborted due to strong wind shear. Unfortunately, that warning was issued on a different ATC frequency. The crew of EK-521 never heard it, so they pressed on. At 8.17 a.m., EK-521 was cleared for an RNP approach, a GPS-based descent to runway 12L. The instrument landing system was unavailable due to conditions. That meant the crew had to rely more heavily on visual cues and manual corrections. The aircraft was fully stabilized. Flaps extended to 30, landing gear down, auto throttle engaged, Winds reported at 11 knots, a mild headwind, but nature had other plans. As the plane descended through 900 feet, the headwind rapidly shifted to a tailwind, now pushing the plane forward instead of slowing it down. Then came the next surprise. Just as the plane crossed 54 feet above the runway threshold, the tailwind reversed back into a headwind. The Boeing's auto throttle reacted by cutting engine thrust, believing the aircraft needed to decelerate and that's when the chain reaction began. In the minutes following the crash of Emirates Flight 521, the scene on the tarmac became a race against time. The aircraft was now a burning wreck, 
flames licking the fuselage, smoke rising in thick columns. But despite the explosion, the broken gear, and the ruptured engine, every single passenger and crew member had made it off the aircraft alive. It was nothing short of a miracle, but the danger wasn't over. As passengers slid down emergency slides and sprinted away from the aircraft, Dubai Airport's fire and rescue services moved in. Fire trucks surrounded the 777 within 90 seconds, unleashing foam and water across the right wing and engine area where the fire was most aggressive. Amidst the chaos, one man stood out, Jasim Issa Al-Balushi, a 27-year-old firefighter from Ras al Khaimah, was leading the charge, directing teams, getting dangerously close to the blaze, and trying to contain the inferno before it spread to the central fuel tank. The cabin crew, some of them suffering from smoke inhalation and burns, were still helping passengers on the ground. Many passengers, disoriented and in shock, were wandering near the wreckage. Some had even tried to retrieve their luggage, a heartbreaking delay that could have been fatal. Kai, a Sri Lankan passenger, would later tell investigators, people were pushing, there was smoke everywhere. I didn't think we would survive. 9.39 AM, the second explosion. Just over an hour after the initial impact at 9.39 AM, it happened. The flames now deep inside the fuselage reached the center fuel tank. A massive secondary explosion ripped through the cabin, a blast so powerful it sent shockwaves across the airfield and hurled debris into the air. Jasim was caught in the blast. He was just meters away from the aircraft, fighting the fire that ultimately claimed his life. He was the only fatality in the Emirates Flight 521 incident, but in many ways he was also the greatest hero of that day. Several other firefighters suffered severe heat exposure and minor injuries but continued working until the blaze was fully extinguished. The aircraft was completely destroyed, reduced to a smoldering shell. The death of Yasim al-Balushi sparked an outpouring of grief across the UAE. He was the first firefighter in the country's history to die in the line of duty at an airport. Emirates released a statement honoring his sacrifice. The Dubai government declared his loss a tragedy for the nation. Social media flooded with tributes. He ran into the flames while others ran away. Because of men like Jasim, others lived to tell the story. His legacy would live on, not just as a fallen responder, but as a symbol of selfless bravery in the face of chaos. As the sun climbed over Dubai, the airport slowly reopened. Emirates ground staff worked to support the survivors, providing accommodations, clothing, food, and counseling. Each passenger was offered $7,000 in compensation surpassing global aviation standards. And while the wreckage of Flight 521 was being cleared from runway 12L, the questions were already beginning. How did such a highly trained crew lose control? What really caused the crash? And could it have been prevented? In the aftermath of the crash, the UAE's General Civil Aviation Authority, GCAA, immediately launched a full-scale investigation, joined by experts from Emirates, Boeing, Rolls-Royce, and the U.S. National Transportation Safety Board, NTSB. With the flight data recorder and cockpit voice recorder recovered intact, investigators quickly pieced together the chilling sequence of events that had led a fully functional Boeing 77300ER to fall out of the sky. What they discovered wasn't a mechanical failure, it wasn't sabotage, and it wasn't weather alone. It was automation misunderstood and a critical delay in human response. In a textbook go-around, the pilots press the TO slash GA switch, takeoff slash go-around, prompting the auto throttle to automatically apply engine thrust, allowing the plane to climb away safely. It's a standard maneuver trained regularly in simulators. But during EK-521's brief contact with the runway, the aircraft interpreted that touchdown as a completed landing, automatically disengaging the auto throttle system. From that point on, any go-around would require manual throttle input. The engines would stay at idle until the pilots noticed and pushed the levers forward themselves. The problem? They didn't notice until it was too late. The cockpit voice recorder captured a surprisingly calm environment. There were no warning alarms, no shouting, just confusion building quietly. At 8.37.17, the go-around was initiated, but with the engines still idling, the 777 was bleeding altitude and speed. 
Only at 8.37.28, 11 seconds later, did the captain finally shout, Wind's here, go around, and manually push the throttles forward. But by then, it was too late. The engines needed six full seconds to spool up, and the aircraft only had two. When the GCAA released its final report, the conclusions were clear and damning. The flight crew failed to recognize that the auto throttle had disengaged. They assumed the engines would increase thrust automatically, as in every other go-round. The go-around was initiated too late. By the time full thrust was commanded, the aircraft didn't have enough altitude or speed to recover. No abnormal system behavior was found. The aircraft responded exactly as designed. It was the crew's situational awareness that failed. Wind shear was a contributing factor, but not the cause. Although conditions were challenging, the crash was primarily the result of human error in managing automation. The lack of a real-time ATC update was a critical communication gap. The pilots were unaware that two aircraft ahead had already aborted their landings. Perhaps the most sobering detail? Had the pilots recognized the idle thrust just five seconds earlier, the aircraft could have safely flown away. But they didn't. And in modern aviation, five seconds can be fatal. This crash, on a clear runway, in a well-maintained aircraft with no technical faults, was a haunting reminder. Technology can't replace awareness, and automation can't think for you. Despite the fireball, the explosion, and the chaos on the runway, every soul on board Emirates Flight 521 survived. All 300 passengers and crew made it out alive, a statistic that defied the scale of the disaster and became the defining silver lining of the event. But behind that miracle was a trail of hard questions about over-reliance on automation, delayed decision-making, and the razor-thin line between routine and catastrophe. The crash didn't just damage an aircraft, it shattered a myth, the myth that highly automated cockpits and elite airline reputations are enough to guarantee safety. Following the final investigation report, Emirates and other international carriers began reviewing their low-altitude go-around procedures. Key changes were introduced. Mandatory simulator training focused on scenarios involving idle thrust and automation disengagement. Emphasis on recognizing non-responsiveness during go-arounds. Enhanced pilot decision-making checklists, especially in regions prone to wind shear. The GCAA also recommended that ATC protocols be updated to ensure critical advisories, like aborted landings, are relayed across all frequencies, not just to individual aircraft. It was a wake-up call. Even the best-run airlines need to revisit the basics. In the days that followed, passengers took to social media and press interviews to share their experience. It was hot. It was terrifying. But the crew were incredible, one passenger recalled. They didn't panic. They saved us. Survivors praised the flight attendants who stayed behind to usher people out, often risking their own lives as smoke choked the aisles. And behind the scenes, Dubai airport staff, medical responders, and counselors worked around the clock to support traumatized travelers. Each survivor was offered $7,000 in compensation, an amount well above global standards. But for many, the real compensation was clarity. Knowing how close they came to disaster, and how many things had to go right to get them out. The sole life lost in the Emirates Flight 521 crash was not a passenger. It was firefighter Jasim Issa Al-Balushi, who ran toward the inferno when everyone else was running away. He didn't hesitate, he didn't retreat, and because of him and his fellow first responders, the disaster didn't claim more lives. He was laid to rest with full honors, remembered as the first responder in UAE aviation history to die in the line of duty. His legacy is etched in more than memory. It's built into future rescue protocols, fire safety training, and the very DNA of emergency response in the region. Today, the Trivondrum Dubai route continues under a new number, EK523. Emirates has moved forward. The runway has long been repaired. The charred wreckage is gone. But the lessons of EK521 remain in cockpits, training simulators, and safety checklists worldwide. Because in aviation, you're only ever one decision away from disaster. And sometimes all it takes is six seconds. For decades, Emirates was known for being flawless. Flight EK-521 proved that flawless isn't the same as fail-proof. 
From wind shear and automation breakdowns to heroic rescues in a nation's mourning, this was more than a crash. It was a cautionary tale engraved into the heart of modern aviation. And for the people on board that day, it was a second chance. Thanks for watching Inside Aero Disasters. If this story moved you, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications for more deep dives into aviation's most unforgettable moments. Until next time, fly safe.